everyone, this is Finn from Robotics in a Nutshell and today we're going to talk about how to set up MicroROS for an SCM32 Mac controller. So what do I mean with that? What I mean with that is that we will have a publisher running on the Mac controller, an SCM32 F429ZI to be exact, and um, yeah, we will publish data on this Mac controller and we will receive it on our desktop PC via UART uh, on our ROS2 application or via ROS2 um, topic echo. And this tutorial aims to support any kind of SCM mic controller. You know, if you go to the MicroROS uh, GitHub page, you will see that there are like a list of mic controllers that you can use. But uh, this list is actually kind of limited. And I was always wondering, like, how do I do this? Like, uh, I have a different mic controller, like, how do I do this? And this video aims to answer this question for SCM32 mic controllers. So if you have a somewhat capable mic controller that is powerful enough to support MicroROS, uh, this tutorial should be possible for you. And um, yeah, this is what we are trying to achieve. So we will look into it. Uh, how do we do this? How do we set this up? How do we make it work? You can do it. Uh, just follow along and let's get started. So our plan is to use these MicroROS SCM32 CubeMX utils, which are part of the MicroROS project. And to do this, we naturally first have to start a CubeMX project. So this is what we're gonna do. So our first step is to create a new project in CubeMX for the F429ZE. And once the project has been generated, we have few steps to do. So the first one is that we uh, want to adjust our uh, RCC, our uh, clock. And we want to use the crystal ceramic uh, resonator. Our second step is then to choose our operating system. Uh, with CubeMX you have the choice to use free RTOS. And uh, here we have to do one special step. Uh, for the default task, the thread that will um, execute the, the MicroROS functionality basically, there is a requirement to let this task have more than 10,000 bytes of stack. And since we give it here as, as words, so as UN32 values, which have four bytes, uh, we can give a value for, of um, 3,000 here and we get 12,000 bytes of stack for this thread. Um, then the next step is to activate the UART. We will use the user 3 here, uh, which is capable of communicating by the USB cable that is connected to the SDM. For macros, you have the choice to use either the uh, DMA or via interrupts. I will choose DMA here. Uh, you have to set up for RX and TX. For RX, you have to use a circular buffer and then you um, also have to give it a very high priority. And in the NVIX settings, activate the global user interrupt. Uh, finally, we will change the Cystic timer here. This is the requirement for Friatos. And yeah, with that, we are done here. Now we can go to the clock configuration. Um, I will just set it up so that it matches the maximum values. And um, after that, we can go to the project manager. I uh, will just set up a path here to um, a folder. And then, this is important, uh, we will have a makefile project. And um, we will adjust this makefile later. I will also activate the option to have the peripheral initialization in separate CNH files. It will require slightly more work in a later step, but I think that's totally worth it for the better project structure. Okay, now we can click on generate code and we have our code base. So you can see now in this folder that I called F129 MicroROS, we have now the generated code. And to this folder, we now want to add the MicroROS SCM32 utils repository. So we will get the URL of the repository and we will do a git clone in this folder. And I advise you to not change any name here. Uh, just leave it as it is because uh, later on scripts will use the names and if you change it, then the scripts won't work as well. So just leave it as it is. Our next step is then to go into this directory that we just cloned and, and check out the right ROS distribution. I'm using ROS2Foxy here. So I will check that out. And after that, we have to do adjustments to the makefile of our CubeMX project. And um, I will just give a quick hint here. Uh, when I auto-generate this, I sometimes have a circumflex M 
sign here very often and um, I think this is related to Windows. So uh, you can use this little program here, dos unix, and give the name of the makefile and then it will remove all of these uh, extra letters. You can just uh, sudo apt install it. And yeah, after that uh, we will search for this build the application comment. And here we have to add some additional code, uh, which I'm showing here. And uh, yeah, just copy it and paste it in. Uh, make sure that if you use shell commands in a make file, you use tabs instead of spaces. Uh, so this is why this was red. And now we will get to the generation of the Micros library. This is done by the use of two doc commands. The first one looks like this. Uh, be sure that you also here uh, check out that you use the right ROS distribution. And yeah, after you pulled the Docker container, uh, you have to execute this command. Uh, again, check the ROS distribution. Now, after a while, the program will come to a halt and it will show you the C flags here. And you should check that they are there, that they are not empty, and if they look good. And if yes, then you just continue here and then the program will uh, install the packages. And you can see here that I have this error on some of the installs um, that it can't find a certain library. And I've just went ahead and ignored this problem and tried if it works. And I also found a Stack Overflow post, I think, uh, where they said it's okay. Um, so yeah, I think it's safe to ignore this. But you can see now that the library generation has concluded. You should be able to find your compiled library in your MicroRAS Cubemix folder, so we can continue with the next step. And this next step is to actually enter the MicroRAS code into our running code. So for example, into the main.c and also into the freeout.c. And the way this works is that um, the guys from MicroRAS have provided the sample main. And we will check how this sample main from MicroRAS is different to our main and we will put those things that are missing into our main.c. And because in Cupermix we generated the peripherals as separate files, there will be some things that seem to be missing, but they are actually not. They are just at a different place. We have to take that into account. Also be aware that I will just copy over the things that are missing right now, and they won't compile necessarily. Uh, I just want to make kind of like a list. So I will restructure them later. So you can see the first meaningful difference are these include statements. But they are related to peripherals and they are not in the main.c anymore, so we ignore them. After that, there are includes for micros, and of course we want those, so we uh, take them over. Uh, then we have the definition of some UARTs and the default tasks and some initialization, and uh, we can skip over that because it's somewhere else. Then we can see here the creation of the default task, but this is now in the freeantos.c. And following that is the clock setup, which is of course different for our Mac controller since it's a different Mac controller. Following that we have a long list of peripheral initialization, which of course we don't have in our main.c, so we can ignore that. And after that an important thing comes, which are these function declarations here. We definitely need those since they are related to micros. They govern in which way the transport is conducted and how micros will allocate memory. And uh, finally, we have the definition of the default task. And this code is definitely required since here we uh, create the node, we create the publisher, we have the loop to publish the data and so on. So we'll, I will also copy that into our code. Since the default task is now located in the freeantos.c, this is where we'll put the code. So now we've done all the necessary changes and we are ready to compile the program. For that, I will use Eclipse here, but you can use whatever fits your needs. In general, you just want to run the make file to compile an L file or a binary, and then you can flash that onto your board. And we will face some compilation errors now. Uh, I decided to keep them in this video because you might also face them, and so you can uh, see what I did here. So let's go quickly through them. So the first thing that has to be changed is the location of these function declarations. They will be referenced in the run function of the thread and because of that they need to be in the freeados.c. Some of these functions have a bool as a return value, and to include this data type we will include stdbool. Now, similar to the functions we've just moved over, we also need the other macros includes in the freeados.c file, because there they are actually used by the thread. Next up, we have a compilation error that ur3 is not declared, 
And to fix this, we simply have to include the user.h peripheral file, which was still missing in the freeRTOS.c. After that, I have to correct a simple copy-paste error, where I have this function header twice. Now we come to a bit more complicated compilation error. It says here that there is an undefined reference to underscore kill and underscore get PID. And these functions are used by newlib. And newlib is basically the equivalent of scdlib um, for microcontrollers. And it enables you to include scdio, for example, so that you have access to the printf function. And if we want to use this newlib in our code, we have to define these functions and also some others. And in general, cubemix would generate a file called syscalls.c, but I think there is a bug where it doesn't generate it, or at least it didn't for me. Uh, so we have to provide the syscalls.c ourselves, and I will simply paste the code here and then provide you with the link to the code. And since we are a makefile-based project, we also have to add the syscalls.c to the C sources so that they will be compiled. And now we will hit build again, and you can see that the build finishes successfully. And I think now is a good time to summarize what we just did. So first we have created a Cubemix project with FreeRTOS and URD enabled. Then we have cloned the MicroRoads utils repo and put it into our project. After that, we modified the make file to include the MicroRoads library. Then we've ran the Docker to generate the MicroRoads lib. After that, we have pasted the code from the sample main from MicroOS into our project. And finally, we fixed some bugs and we added the syscalls.c. And now I want to go briefly into the code that we've added and also the modifications to the make file so that we kind of understand what's going on here. So first, I want to talk about these function declarations. Since they're declared here, they also have to be defined somewhere. And this is actually in the MicroOS utils. Uh, under the extra sources and then microOS transports. And here you can find uh, for DMA and interrupt based transport the definitions of these functions. And you can see here that they map these functions to HAL calls. So in, in STM32, um, HAL is a common library that you use to transmit via UART, transmit via SPC, and so on. So basically, this is the connection between ROS and the hardware. And you can see a similar structure for the memory allocation files, but here they seem to provide a custom implementation they made themselves. Now, looking at the additions to the make file, we can see that we added the generated library to the LD flags. Then also we provided the include paths to this library. And uh, then you can also see that the files that we just talked about, the memory allocation and the transport files, which are on the extra sources, they are added here to the C sources so that they are also compiled. And that's basically all there is to it. And one thing to note here is that um, here the DMA transport is compiled, but if you want to have interrupt transport, then of course you have to compile the IT transport.c. Now concerning the code and the threads, we can see that first we set up the custom transport. So basically we tell Ross that if you want to write somewhere or if you want to read from somewhere, then you can do so via these functions that we've just seen. So in general, we just pass them as function pointers here. Um, after that, we do the same for the memory allocation. Um, so we also pass the functions here to an allocator. And once we finish that, we create a node instance, a publisher instance, and uh, then we define some initializing options, and then we create the node. And uh, once we have the node, we can also create the publisher and then we enter the while loop, and here we tell the publisher to continuously publish the message that we have defined previously. So what does that tell us? When we run this code, we have a node that will attempt to publish data to a topic. And now the question is, how do we receive that? And this is where we enter the next step of this video, and this is to create the ROS agent. And basically the task of the ROS agent is to make the connection between the connected MCU and our desktop PC. So it's kind of the man in the middle. So we will now see how to set up that. Before I do this, I just want to quickly show you what happens if you don't have a ROS agent running, because this might help you in debugging. So I flashed my MCU here and I stepped through the code. 
and the way you will stop is this RCLC support in it. Uh, as far as I've observed, it will just stall here and uh, yeah, this might show you that you don't have your ROS agent running or that there is something wrong with the connection. Now installing the agent is pretty straightforward. For that we will use the MicroRoss setup repository. Uh, we will create our own folder for it, so it's not in the folder that we used before but in another one. And we will create a source folder and then we will um, clone our repository in there. Then make sure that you check out the right ROS distribution again and then we can follow these instructions here to build the workspace. So basically we just copy paste them and then a bit below that there are the instructions to build the agent and again we basically just copy paste them, execute them and then we have our workspace built and the agent is ready to go. Now you might wonder how to use the agent. For that you can just do a rust to run micro ROS agent, micro ROS agent and then a dash dash help and here you can see some of the options, some of them are common so you can use them for everything and then there are some that are, that are dependent on the transport that you choose and since we are using UART here we have a serial connection and you can see that we can set here the baud rate and also the device that we will use and if you don't know what device you are currently using um, I can give you one hint, there are multiple ways to do this but I, I often do it like this I do a D message minus W. I will show you log messages of devices that are being plugged in and taken out. So if you plug in your device after you started this command, you will see the name that will be assigned to this device. And this is then the one that you select for a device name. Just be sure to precede it with a slash dev slash and then the name of the device. Now using our new knowledge, we can start the ROS agent. And you can see here first I take the wrong device name and then it gives me this message that it couldn't find the serial port. But if you then choose the right device, it will show you this output where it's initializing itself. Now, in general, we are now at that special moment where it should start to work. So what I'm doing now is I flash my device again and I run it. But as you can see, you can see nothing. And the reason for that is that in the syscalls that I used, there was one faulty function and I replaced it and I will also replace it in the code that I will give to you. But in general I advise you here to be on the lookout for any faults. So for example I have breakpoints in your hard fault handlers. I stop the MCU and kind of look around where it's currently at and this might give you a hint. Also be aware that you might have to restart your MCU after you have launched the ROS agent. So start the agent first and then the MCU. And after I fixed the issues with the syscalls, I tried again. And now I got a step further, now it does establish the session, but still I'm missing some output here. And after some more investigation, it turned out that another serial program that I had running on the same port was causing the issue. So if you have something like putty, hterm, gtk term, something like that running on the same UART that you use for ROS, I advise you to just disconnect it because it can interfere with the ROS communication it seems. But then finally it worked. You can see now that it created the topic and the publisher and now there's only one last thing to do to check out whether ROS topic echo actually shows the message of the publisher. And to do so, and this is the beauty of micro ROS, we will simply do a ROS2 topic echo and then the name of the topic that we've given in the embedded subscriber. And here you can see it. We do receive the message from the publisher, uh, we see how the integer is increasing and you can also see that if I set a breakpoint here in the embedded code, the publishing stops and if I then continue the embedded code, the publishing also continues. And that's amazing to me. This makes life so much easier. There would have been such an overhead to implement this myself and I think this is why MicroRoss is really important and will make life for embedded ROS development much much easier. So with that we are at the end of the video. I hope it was helpful for you. In the future I want to talk more about publishers, subscribers, services and actions in MicroOS. So until then, see you and goodbye.